Chapter 571, The Power of the Bloodline In fact, when Lu Xu was resisting the families, he already had control of the black market. Li Xiao was no more than the door guard. Thus, his style of speaking when he was managing the black market made it easy for the secret practitioners to recognize him. Although the secret practitioners often received harsh words, they respected Lu Xu from the bottom of their heart. There were not many people who could make the six big families, whom they did not dare to even face, suffer heavy defeat. Moreover, he was so young. The weak student laughed. My uncle said that he would allow me to train. After I have the strength of a class F, he would allow me to follow him overseas to transport goods. He said, why go to school when you can train instead? This was the dividing line between students with good grades and students with poor grades. Those with good grades would talk about tertiary education, while those with poor grades would sign on to the military, go to a third-rate university or get a diploma. At this point, it seemed as if he would follow a secret practitioner to become a secret practitioner. Another path had opened for them. Lu Xu felt that this path was not a good path to embark on. But the students in front of him knew little about the realm of cultivation. Thus, they thought that this path was more prominent and of high repute. Furthermore, he did not agree with the secret practitioner's point of view. Why go to school when you can train instead? The expert practitioners would make you thoroughly understand the importance of knowledge while you underwent training. After school today, my uncle will bring me to the Route 301 black market for a look. I've heard that many ordinary people also go there often. Apparently selling training resources earns a lot of money, said the weak student. He was always talking about his uncle. It was like on a normal day after everyone had gotten drunk. They would start to boast and compare, my friend does so and so, my dad's friend does so and so. The words, secret practitioner, and a awakening, had become trendy. Many former Daoyuan class students began to regret the decision their parents had helped them to make. All of them said that it was very dangerous. But to the students who had never seen the Daoyuan class, what was dangerous? It seemed that training was now mainstream. The old times were gradually being replaced by the new. Times had changed. Mindsets from the past and new things clashed with each other. In the end, a brand new era will definitely emerge. Lu Xu was very calm. He knew that things like, my friend is very impressive, or oh, my dad's friend is very impressive, was all big talk. Why not boast about your own abilities? After school, Lu Xu walked out of the campus. His life had returned to a monotonous routine, go to school, go home. But this time, Lu Xu did not have to sell boiled eggs. Every day after getting home, he had more important things to do. He had to train, practice his sword, and resolve his conflict with Hai Gongzi. As he reached the gate, Lu Xu saw the weak student briskly walk towards a middle-aged man. Uncle, you're here. Didn't you say that you would wait for me at home? The middle-aged man laughed. Won't we save time this way? Come, I'll take you to the black market for a look. I'll also introduce you to a few uncles. Who knows, you may strike a deal with them in the future. The surrounding students were all envious, especially those whose grades were poorer. They looked at how their comrade at the bottom of the class had opened up a new path. It was as if he was secretly a son of a rich entrepreneur who did not have to care about grades. People once joked that during a reunion among the sons of rich entrepreneurs, they would sigh, those with good grades are lucky. Unlike me, whose grades were too poor to go to university. I could only take over my family business. My dad knew that I was very sad, so he sent me a Ferrari. But something unexpected happened. The middle-aged man saw Lu Xu's figure among the crowd and was dumbfounded. The Venerable The middle-aged man, who was high-spirited about bringing his nephew to the black marker, suddenly smiled and jogged towards Lu Xu. The Venerable, do you attend school here? Lu Xu turned and looked at him. Go do what you have to do. He remembered this man. 
Back then when he was buying back magical stones, the man had helped out and was praised by Li Yixiao. No wonder he said that he had relations with the Lord and the Venerable. It turns out he had made outstanding contributions. Okay. The middle-aged man left without another word. The Venerable evidently did not want to talk to him. He should go away as fast as he could. But as he brought the shocked weak student away, the surrounding students could not sit still. So the Venerable they had been talking about was Lu Xu? Everyone had thought that Lu Xu would inevitably be out of line with the true experts as he did not have the chance to go to the Luoshan Cultivation College. After all, everyone had said that the Luoshan Cultivation College would definitely produce many elites. Those who did not make it would be allocated to the higher ranks of the security formation. But it turns out that to the secret practitioners, Lu Xu was on the same level as Principal Li. Li Xiao was a heavenly king. Is there something wrong with the world? In the past, everyone had thought that Lu Xu was only a metahuman. If he was not able to awaken, then he could only go as far as Class C, even if he could continue to advance. Wasn't there someone in the Golden Foundation who said that after Class C, strength alone would put him at a great disadvantage against others? How did Lu Xu become a sword expert? Recently, those who were discontent with Lu Xu suddenly saw Lu Xu studying properly. He seemed like he was doing his best to get into an ordinary university. Although they did not say anything, they were slightly happy. The world was like this. The complexity of humans was scarier than supernatural beings. Sometimes, people would form unpleasant intentions even without them realizing. These intentions had been eliminated just by the secret practitioner calling Lu Xu, the Venerable. They had returned to reality and once again got to know the current Lu Xu. Lu Xu calmly walked towards the district. The two worlds had been separated by the magical era. Since they were not in the same world, he did not need to care about their opinion of him either. Lu Xu suddenly recalled that he still had one tool he did not know the function of. After he took a shower, he returned to his room. He retrieved the black pearl from the seal of lands and looked carefully at it. The circulating black fog within the pearl was the same as when he had first received it. It seems like he could go in and out of the pearl as he wished. He did not know who was inside the pearl. Could they be an ancient figure like that of Hai Gongzi? Thinking back, the voice was wide and distant, but it did not carry any animosity. Although Lu Xu resisted exploring the Black Pearl, the words he had heard continued to resound in his head. Why did they say that he was of a familiar bloodline? What exactly was his bloodline? The deities had proven that bloodline existed. Whether it was Coral's Gungner or the power to drop lightning from her awakened bloodline, they were all no different from Odin. Chapter 572 Second Exploration of the Black Pearl Lu Xu looked at the black pearl in his hand very carefully. After much hesitation, he decided to once again explore the pearl. He had always felt that he was an ordinary orphan. His parents might not have been able to take care of him or was naturally weak and had illnesses. That was why he was left at the door of the orphanage. But ever since the magical era, Lu Xu had always had one question. The origin of his training was that black pendant in his swaddling clothes back then. Whether it was the flame in his heart, the white tree mark in the center of his palm, the celestial map, corpse dog, concealed arrow, and even his system to collect distress points, it had happened all at the same time that night. He did not know what exactly had happened. But he was sure of one thing. His circumstance was not as simple as he had thought in these seventeen years of living. This black pearl gave him not only the hope of boosting his power, but also the possibility of tracing back his past. Perhaps by knowing the origin of his bloodline, it would allow him to understand his own background. Lu Xu was not sure, but this unknown answer made him succumb to the temptation of going back into the black pearl and clarifying his thoughts. His magical instincts unsealed the black pearl. The next thing he knew, he was inside the thick fog. The fog gently circulated around Lu Xu. Lu Xu looked around and realized that he was not in complete darkness. 
There seemed to be a faint but magnificent sliver light beyond the fog. But it was blocked by the thick black fog, causing the light to be dimmed. The ground beneath his feet did not seem to be solid. Lu Xu squatted down and touched the ground, only to realize that it was soil. Lu Xu's sun mirror appeared. He had a bad feeling about this. When he felt the texture of the soil, he knew that something was wrong. After he had taken out his sun mirror, he confirmed one thing, not only had his magical instincts entered the black pearl, his entire body was within the pearl as well. There was a world within the black pearl. You are here. The distant voice within the black pearl echoed in the desolate land. Lu Xu guessed that this world was not very large. If it were, there would not have been an echo. Lu Xu did his best to calm down. Who are you? While Lu Xu was speaking, he used the sun mirror to illuminate his surroundings. In an unknown environment, Lu Xu was uneasy. The voice said, Who I am is not important. On the contrary, I am quite curious. Why have you appeared here? Lu Xu thought about it and said, I received a black pearl by chance. I used my magical instincts to get here. Who on earth are you? The voice was still for a moment. What is, the black pearl? Lu Xu was slightly surprised. He thought that since the voice had been here for a long time, there was no reason for it to not know what the black pearl was. Why was there a strange feeling? The concentration of magical energy here was much higher than that of outside. Lu Xu could feel the flow of air. But there was another thing that he had to know. Last time you mentioned a familiar bloodline. Are you talking about my bloodline? The voice was still for a moment. It just felt familiar. But it was a long time ago. I can no longer distinguish what exactly the bloodline is. Lu Xu was very disappointed. He did not expect that the answer he got would not be able to solve the doubt he had. He also had no way of confirming whether the voice really did not know, or did not want to say what it knew. Who on earth are you? Lu Xu asked loudly. In what era did you live in? The black fog was still for a moment, as if the voice had never spoken. Lu Xu was puzzled. Could you not answer such a simple question? Do I have find out myself? Lu Xu did not even know where the voice came from. He thought about it and said, Do you want to know how to get out of here? This sentence was based on Lu Xu's judgment of the situation. He suspected that the voice had been trapped in this black pearl by someone. Suddenly, the voice sounded with emotions that Lu Xu could feel, Yes, I want to know. Lu Xu nodded his head. I want to know too. From Ming Yuaya's distress, plus 666. Ming Yuaya? Lu Xu had calmed down at this point. At first, the voice had made Lu Xu guess that it was some sort of spirit. But the moment he earned distress points, Lu Xu felt that the situation was not as scary as he had initially thought. At least the voice came from a person who could provide him with distress points, right? Lu Xu felt that from the start till now. The voice had painstakingly curated the atmosphere to make it seem like it was a strong and supernatural presence. But this facade collapsed the moment distress points were produced. Lu Xu was even more certain that the voice was from someone who was trapped here. This made him slightly disappointed. Was the black pearl used to trap people within it? This did not make sense. How could the person not even know what they were trapped within? Are you still around? Lu Xu shouted, but there was no response. Ha! <laughs> ha! Pretending to be mysterious here? Lu Xu decided to uncover the actual situation. Ka! The sun mirror in Lu Xu's hand gave off a very bright light. Before Lu Xu could react, the person said, What is this? Turn it off, turn it off. From Ming Yuaya's distress, plus 666. Crash. There was the sound of shackles. Lu Xu saw the rays from the sun mirror passing through the fog and illuminating a face. Ming Yuaya's four limbs had been shackled to a stone wall. 
he could only move within a five-meter radius of the wall. He sat cross-legged on the soil, using his arm to shield his eyes. The shackles were not made of an ordinary material. Lu Xu saw dark red lines scattered across the shackles. Lu Xu stood a safe distance away and sized up the person in front of him. He was of small build and was topless. His linen pants were worn out, most likely because of age. His face was very thin. He was a very simple person, but Lu Xu was highly wary of him. This was not because his appearance was very fierce, but because Lu Xu could not sense any waves of energy from him. But for someone who had been trapped in such a mysterious place and had lived for an unknown period of time, how could he emit no waves of energy? Who are you? Lu Xu asked calmly. I am, could you move that light in your hands first, the person said. He had been in the dark for too long. No matter how impressive he was, there was no way he could resist such a strong ray of light. The eyes would forever be one of the weakest parts of a practitioner's body. Chapter 573 The Obscure Black Fog Honestly speaking, Lu Xu was very disappointed right now. He was anticipating an invisible strand of will or a powerful creature, not a prisoner. In the games, players often opened a treasure to find an old man who could help them with training techniques and expertise, or even the access to another training venue. But all hope was lost now. It turned out to be just a man like that. Although Lu Xu had not fully trusted the man's claim about his bloodline, he was still annoyed about the anticlimactic discovery. The man was even better at destroying his own image than Lu Xu. But there was still a tinge of hope that remained in Lu Xu's heart, for the man would not have possibly lied about the force of his bloodline during their first encounter had he not noticed anything unusual. At this moment, Lu Xu realized there was something wrong about the thick black fog, because there was a burning sensation on his skin. He looked back at the man sitting crossed legs in front of him and noticed that there was a green glow around him in defense against the fog. Immediately Lu Xu summoned his divine water to surround his entire body. The burning feeling disappeared at once. However, the golden snake suddenly ducked its head out of the water and drew a deep breath with its mouth wide open. Like a whale inhaling the sea water, the thick black fog gushed into the snake's mouth incessantly. In the next instant, the golden snake turned black at a visible rate. Not only the snake, the divine water had turned inky black as well. That was totally unexpected. Yet, despite the color change, Lu Xu was unharmed under the protection of the water. Within a few seconds, the fog in the black pearl was completely siphoned into the water, whose corrosive power had also more than doubled in the process. If Nojoa Hakushun were in front of him now, he probably would not have dared to jump into the water directly during his desperate counterattack. The man looked rather surprised. What is it? How can it benefit from this obscure black fog? Who on earth are you? Ming Yue's protective glow vanished. He could finally take a break after prolonged torment by the black fog. That's not important. Tell me who you are first. Lu Xu did not give in. Move away your light first. Ming Yuaiye yelled. Lu Xu complied. The man sat up straight and diverted the topic again. Where on earth are you from? I've never seen clothes like yours. Lu Xu was wearing a jacket and a pair of jeans. Wasn't that the normal outfit nowadays? From the man's question, he realized that they probably did not belong to the same era for the man had not even seen modern clothes. Instead of giving an explanation, Lu Xu continued asking, Who are you? Tell me. If you don't, I'm going to shine you with the light. I am the North Lord of Heaven, Qing Kong One. Without hesitation Lu Xu aimed the mirror at Ming Yuaiye again. Naughty. Freak. From Ming Yuaiye's distress, plus 999. Lu Xu was displeased. His name was Ming Yuaiye, so why was he pretending to be some North Lord of Heaven? Meanwhile, he was a bit confused too. Who the hell was the North Lord of Heaven Qing Kong? He certainly did not exist in any Chinese myths. 
One more chance. Think carefully before you speak. Lu Xu moved away the sun mirror again. I am the South Lord of Heaven when Zaifu. Freak. I'll reconsider my response. Move away that light. From Ming Yuea's distress, plus 999. I am the West Lord of Heaven Duanmu Huangqi. Why don't you trust me? I'm telling the truth. Move away that light. From Ming Yuea's distress, plus 999. Lu Xu said coldly, I am the East Lord of Heaven Haigongzi's follower, Kasayapa the Venerable. Bullshit. The East Lord of Heaven is Yu Fuyao. Who the hell is that Hai Gongzi? He's not worthy of being the East Lord of Heaven. Besides, none of the Lord's followers is called the Venerable. Ming Yueya was pissed. From Ming Yueya's distress, plus 999. Lu Xu did not mind him getting angry though, he was simply shocked by the seeming honesty in his attitude. At first, Lu Xu distrusted him for his unconvincing stories. You could have claimed to being Zhang Tu, Su Fu Three, Taishan Lao Jun, Four. Also called the Grand Supreme Elderly Lord, the Taoist Ancestor, or Monkey King. He could not even be bothered to follow the folklore. But now, Lu Xu sensed that something was up. Based on his expressions, it seemed that all those North Lord of Heaven and the South Lord of Heaven were real. Was he joking? Could it be that this Mingyueya was from another world, just like the puppet master? Back then, didn't he decide to keep the black pearl precisely because of its similarity to the mask? Did it mean that Mingyueya belonged to the same world as the puppet master, and that they were both descendants of the so-called ancient E4 family? Do you know the puppet master? Lu Xu asked calmly. What the hell is puppet master? Ming Yueya was stunned. I've never heard of it. Lu Xu took his words with a grain of salt. He could not fully trust somebody who refused to even tell him his real name. If not for the man's distress points, Lu Xu might have been fooled. Lu Xu looked up under the illumination of the sun mirror, hoping to examine the environment there. Ming Yueya was confused. What's that mirror in your hand? How can it shine through the thick fog in this chaos abyss? I have no obligation to speak to you since you've never even heard of Hai Gongzi. Ming Yueya was speechless. From Ming Yueya's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu continued with his inspection, but he realized there was nothing within his sight above him, as if there was no ceiling. Don't waste your energy, Ming Yueya said with a sneer, this abyss is more than thousands of miles in depth. It's unrealistic if you are hoping to see anything up there. Then, Ming Yueya's jaws almost dropped in shock as he saw Lu Xu climbing up the stone wall. Are you nuts? What are you doing? I'm climbing up to take a look, of course, Lu Xu replied, as if it was common sense. Don't do that. Both of us will be in trouble if you touch the chaos holy fire. Curiosity kills the cat, thought Ming Yueya. Lu Xu paused. Was it really dangerous up there? But he complied with Ming Yueya's advice and jumped back down to the ground. Do you have any treasure for me? Or a letter? For example, some secret training techniques? Ming Yueya took a long moment to recover from his confusion. Look at me. What do you think I have with me? I lost a set of training techniques here and I'm going to search your body to see whether you have it. If it's not with you, I don't mind your reciting it for me, the sun mirror was flickering in Lu Xu's hand. From Ming Yueya's distress, plus 666. Negotiation please, not extortion. Chapter 574, Escape the Rigid Framework at the moment, every trace of the thick black fog in the abyss had been absorbed by the snake, which Lu Xu reckoned should have a change of name. Certainly, the golden snake was inappropriate now, but the black snake did not sound fancy either. Its name should not be solely dependent on its color. Otherwise, it would seem Lu Xu was a bad name chooser. How about the chaos snake? Lu Xu felt it sounded nice. 
Now, sitting with his legs crossed, Ming Yueya stared at Lu Xu's sun mirror which was now pointing elsewhere. He wondered how this young man had entered, though he would admit he was not being honest either. Suddenly Ming Yueya said, I have a training technique that should be suitable for you. Years ago, the East Lord of Heaven Yufuyao gained his fame through that. Come here and I will tell you. Lu Xu was happy. It's fine. I can hear you from here. I'm listening. Lu Xu was not stupid, he refused to enter the man's range of activity based on an estimation of the length of his chains. Who knew what he was up to? Lu Xu predicted that the stranger was at least as strong as the puppet master. Ming Yueyu shook his head. It's impossible for me to tell you if you are so far away. Okay. Lu Xu gave a nod of acknowledgement. How long have you been here? Ming Yueya was surprised at the sudden change of topic. After recalling, he answered, You can't tell how many days have passed in a dark place like this. Do you have any food cravings? asked Lu Xu. I can do an exchange with you. I give you food, and you tell me what I want to know. Ming Yueya reckoned it was a fine deal. He had been struggling with preserving his life against the thick black fog with his spirit chi, but all living creatures needed food to survive. Besides, one would inevitably miss the taste of food after having starved for too long. Ming Yueye agreed. I will answer three questions if you can cook me a glazed flaming chicken. Lu Xu's face was expressionless, but he was mumbling in his heart, what the heck is a glazed flaming chicken? At the moment, he was somehow convinced that this man was an alien, but it remained to be seen whether he and the puppet master were from the same world. Yet, it would be easier to deal with a starving man. Immediately Lu Xu exited from the Black Pearl and came back with two roasted chickens that he bought from the best store in Luo City. Ming Yueya was confused as he realized it was not a glazed flaming chicken. Where did you get that food? Regardless, he was very much attracted to the enticing smell. Not afraid of potential poisoning due to his enhanced immune system from cultivation, Ming Yueye accepted the food. Come. Give me the food and I'll answer three questions from you, Ming Yueye said. Okay. Lu Xu placed the roasted chickens at somewhere just out of Ming Yueye's reach. Then, he disappeared from the Black Pearl. Ming Yueya was utterly shocked. That was definitely unexpected. What happened to trust? He had actually prepared a perfect story to answer any questions Lu Xu might have. From Ming Yueya's distress, plus 666. On the outside, Lu Xu paid special attention to whether he could receive distress points from across the Black Pearl. The truth was, he could. Disappointment crossed Lu Xu's face as he recognized that the man was not planning to be honest with him at all. Besides, would he really follow the man's training techniques even if he was willing to offer? Absolutely not. What if his vital passages were corrupted? Hence, Lu Xu would rather view the man as just another stable source of distress points so as to relieve his own distress. But he was certain about one thing. Ming Yueya's background was complicated. Otherwise, he would certainly have used his power against Lu Xu after being tricked so many times. Or, could his power have been restricted too? Perturbed, Lu Xu sat on the rooftop, gazing into the distance as he swallowed abyss fruits on behalf of Lu Xiaoyu. He used to sit there together with her, but now he was alone. Among the two treasures that he had obtained recently, one was Cheng Ying's sword with an unreliable sword spirit, and the other was a black pearl with an equally unreliable prisoner trapped in the abyss. No matter what, all his encounters were somehow unreliable. After midnight, Lu Xu got up again to practice his sword. As he swung his sword, his mind was engrossed in how to continue pissing off Nye Ting. At this very moment, Hai Gongzi emerged from the Cheng Ying sword again. He commented in an overbearing tone, although I have to admit that you do have some skills in sword, they are far from enough. Do understand that there is so much to learn about sword play, and a single swing can be performed in countless ways. Now, you are like a clumsy woodcutter who chops woods with only his arms and hands, not his brains. 
you are still a far cry from the ideal state where you can command your sword with ease. The sarcasm in his words had forcefully reduced Lu Xu's swordplay skills to nothing. Lu Xu was annoyed. He was pretty satisfied with his current abilities. Fine. Show me how you do it then. Stupid, Hai Gongzi jeered. In the next instant a long sword materialized in his hand. It was of the color of a glacier, with an eerie tinge of blue in its whiteness. Then, he flipped his wrist and thrust his sword towards a chair in front of him. The sword seemed as weightless as a feather, but at the very instant when the blade was about to come into contact with the chair, Hai Gongzi's wrist trembled slightly, transferring all his strength to the tip of the sword. In that second, the blade was too fast to be seen. Now, Lu Xu's mind was fully occupied with the instantaneous trajectory of the blade, which was simply mesmerizing. Li Xianyi's 13-letter mnemonic rhyme on the knack of swordplay moves, including smash, pick and thrust, were nothing but the foundation. He did not have enough time to teach Lu Xu more advanced techniques. As a result, Lu Xu's sword skills for close combat were still somewhat inflexible, despite his impressive physical control. Understandable, though, because it was unrealistic for someone with less than one year of training experience to outperform those who had spent decades on sword play. Hence, his current goal was to escape the rigid framework of the 13-letter rhyme and practice the sword with his brains. However, Hai Gongzi let out a cold laugh as Lu Xu was in deep thought. How was it? Have you learned anything? Before he could finish his sentence, Lu Xu interrupted, his brows knitted tightly, who allowed you to split my chair? It's handed down from my ancestors. You have to pay for it. Hai Gongzi was speechless. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 399. Stupid. Then Hai Gongzi returned to Cheng Ying's sword, unwilling to waste any more time with Lu Xu. Left alone, Lu Xu started recounting the feeling earlier. He made an attempt to break free from the rigid cage and let his sword skills manifest freely. But what had gone unnoticed was that the rate of snow accumulation on his Qi Mountain had suddenly doubled from that instant. In fact, the Qi Mountain itself was related to one's sword energy. Chapter 575, By the Mountains, By the Sea Did Lu Xu have to get into a dispute with Hai Gongzi? Not necessarily. Who wanted to meet someone who judged them every day? Who wanted to meet someone who kept commenting ignorant? No one would be able to take it. This was not a laughing matter. Lu Xu genuinely felt Hai Gongzi's disdain towards him, this made Lu Xu very unhappy. Who was he comparing himself to? In ten days, the new year would arrive. Lu Xu was alone at home. He did not feel like purchasing goods for the new year. He felt that the potatoes he had peeled would be enough to feed a family of three for half a year. He bought so many potatoes at the market that the vendors thought he was running a restaurant. Every morning, while Lu Xu practiced his sword, Hai Gongzi could not help but pass judgment on his technique and criticize him. After that, Lu Xu would once again force Hai Gongzi back into the sword. It was rare that they lived in some harmony now. At least it was not like in the past, when Lu Xu went crazy using his blood to inflict mutual harm. During this period, Li Ixiao visited Lu Xu a few times. Li Ixiao found that Lu Xu was very steadfast. Who said that not going overseas would be bad for him? Before dawn, Lu Xu had appeared in the courtyard even while the sky was dark. But unlike in the past, he did not put his full strength into his swings. His swings were very slow, as if it were the first time he had seen Lu Xu practice the sword. His swing was like a snowflake gently drifting down. It was as if there was air resisting the sword, not letting it come down. Although the swings were slow, Lu Xu was at full concentration. His eyes followed the movement of the blade. There was an indescribable, lingering charm about how the sword moved. Throughout this process, Lu Xu's muscles and celestial powers maintained high levels of energy. It was like a seemingly peaceful sea with raging waves underneath the surface. 
The reason why his swings were slow was because he was analyzing the many variations in the process of the sword moving downwards. He was also feeling every little change in his body as the sword slowly moved down. If a neighbor saw this scene, they would probably be surprised. What was Lu Xu doing? The Cheng Ying sword was transparent. So from an outsider's point of view, Lu Xu was crazy, swinging his arms while holding nothing. But during an actual battle, the enemy would not even be able to see the sword, let alone determine how wide or how long the sword was. This would make people very fearful. Hai Gongzi calmly said, Your progress is fast, but you are too clumsy. Do you think that reducing your speed would allow for more time to think? The best attacks are the fastest. When will you be able to go faster? Can't I go slow and proceed step by step in an orderly way? Lu Xu was unhappy. All along, he did things steadily and surely. Thus, he was in no hurry. He understood what Hai Gongzi meant. His sword had to be fast. But he had to have a training process. He was patiently waiting for quantitative change to become qualitative change. Hai Gongzi laughed coldly. Ignorant people always say, go slow, there is still tomorrow. But you don't even know whether you will be alive for that tomorrow. Lu Xu was not angry. He laughed, can I ask you something? I have a feeling that you were an important figure even before you were born. How did you become a sword spirit within the Cheng Ying sword? Lu Xu had guessed that Hai Gongzi was different from the weapon spirits he had encountered in the past. First, his human form was very unique. Second, he had a complete mind of his own. It would not be an overstatement to say that he was a complete soul that resided within the Cheng Ying sword. This made people slightly uncertain. If Hai Gongzi was so impressive, then how did he end up inside the Cheng Ying sword? But Lu Xu felt that things were not as simple as he had thought, as he could sense the feelings Hai Gongzi had towards the Cheng Ying sword. He treated the sword like a close friend. If he had been forced inside the sword, how could he form such feelings? Suddenly, something unexpected happened. Hai Gongzi coldly looked at Lu Xu. From now on, tell me when you want to take a break. My patience has a limit. You may be the current owner of the Cheng Ying sword, but that doesn't mean that I can't take action against you. Lu Xu smacked his lips. He suddenly realized that Hai Gongzi was not slacking around while watching him practice his sword. Earlier, Lu Xu did not pay much attention. But now, Lu Xu realized that there was something different about the backyard. What was different? Lu Xu recalled what had happened just now. It seemed as if Hai Gongzi was silently arranging the items in the backyard while watching Lu Xu train. The items in the backyard had been arranged neatly. Even the handles of the bottle and the cup on the stone table were facing the same direction. Wait a minute. Lu Xu looked at Hai Gongzi. Do you have OCD? Hai Gongzi said with scorn, that is what you humans call it. I am only seeking perfection in this world. How would someone like you understand? Oh. Lu Xu nodded his head. There were times when he also felt that in this world, mental illnesses came about because people labeled those who suffered from them as patients. For some with OCD, they had to have an accurate routine. For example, they had to eat lunch at 12, noon sharp, or reach home at 8 p.m. sharp, or arrange their items neatly. Once, a railway worker with OCD was interviewed. He said that while repairing the tracks, he had to ensure that the tracks were not even one millimeter off. This was his pursuit of beauty. To many of these people, they were unable to accept any angle other than the right angle. They could not accept items being haphazardly thrown around. Was this necessarily a disease? Not necessarily. Lu Xu felt that one could not say that because most people did not behave this way, these kinds of mental rules should be defined as a sort of illness. This was just like how many deep sea fish did not have the sense of sight. Could you say that they were disabled? No, right? Lu Xu nodded his head, showing that he understood what Hai Gongzi had said. 
Did you know? Lu Xu finished speaking and stored his sword before going inside. Hai Gongzi was dumbfounded. Did I know what? What were you going to say? Hey, don't leave me hanging like that. Finish what you wanted to say. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. Lu Xu had no intention to talk to him. He locked the toilet door and started to enjoy his bath. After he finished, he walked out of the toilet and saw Hai Gongzi fiercely staring at him. Finish what you wanted to say. From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. Lu Xu thought about it and said, Did you know? By the mountains, by the sea, there was a group of. Lu Xu finished speaking and went to make breakfast. By the mountains, by the sea, there was a group of what? Say it properly. Ao Hai was very angry. How lowly could Lu Xu get? Not finishing his sentence and leaving him hanging? From Ao Hai's distress, plus 999. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens